Hey there, Wolfpack fans. It's me again, Kenton Gibbs, bringing you another episode of Locked On Wolfpack. And on today's episode, we're going to be talking NBA draft and not the guy that some of you may be thinking of. We're going to be talking to Quavian Smith. Let me tell you why. There are many accounts, including from uh, Brett Seagal, that this, this young man has put on a an absolutely rarefied performance at the combine, which means that his stock has seen a meteoric rise in a very, very short amount of time. So I'm going to be telling you whether I personally would be taking to Quavian Smith in the first round. Now, let's throw a few disclaimers out here. Number one, we're going to take our feelings out of this because I'm going to get into the good, the great, the bad, the ugly. I'm going to get into all of it because in order to fully examine whether or not I believe he's a first rounder, I would take all those things into account. And the next thing after that, Please know, take this with a grain of salt because I'm not an NBA GM. And as we learn with Tim Tebow, like I talked about with Ryan Roberts, everybody doesn't need to love you as that first round pick. You don't need all 30 teams to want you to be their first round pick. You just need one. You just need one. So we're going to touch on that on today's episode of Locked On Wolfpack. So stay with me. We got a great episode up for you. Our Locked On Wolf Pack, your daily podcast on the NC State Wolf Pack, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So in having the discussion of is Terquavion Smith a first round pick, before we talk about whether he is or isn't, we have to talk about how we got here, right? That has to be discussed. Because this was not the case. He was not looked at in this light, um, you know, all throughout the season or, or anything like that. He was most te- most not teams, most recruiting sites. I think the highest he was rated on any recruiting site was 24-7 sports. And they had him at uh, barely inside the top 80 or something like that. So this, this wasn't a situation where everybody came in and knew like, oh, yeah, Jaquavin is going to be a first rounder next year. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about that. So let's talk about how he got there. Even after the season, there wasn't talk of like, oh, he's leaving or he should be leaving or he should even be uh, considering to leave. So what happened that allowed, you know, or that caused um, there to be a conversation about this? Tequavian has put on a show at the combine. There is no if, ands, or buts about that. The combine, excuse me, the combine leader in three-point star drill at 72 percent he led his team in scoring one of the games uh in the 515 scrimmage at the combine with 17 points so when i look at that i get it i see what seagal was talking about or seagal i'm sorry if i mispronounced your name brett Uh, i know i got the brett part right because that's you know my main man brett friedlander that's always coming on uh and you know he we we got that part right so i don't know if i got your last name right but I know I got that part right. Now, when we talk about um, what Brett had to say about him, we're looking at, I'm going to just take some quotes out of out of what he said as far as talking about Terquavion Smith. Now, with Terquavion, it's kind of the same level of hype where he pr- played really well in the first. I think he had like 16 or 17 points. He showed his athleticism and was able to get to his spots on the floor and be able to knock down a shot from anywhere. He looked confident and comfortable. Athleticism was off the charts in terms of what the expectations were. He just looked like an NBA rookie out there on the court compared to the other guys who were looking to get drafted. He looked like he looked like that. He already had been drafted and was preparing for summer league. So with that being said, this is, again, this I'm breaking down how we got to this point. He has balled out. He has done what he needed to do. He made himself some money. Now, as far as the case for why is he, is he not? Why is he, why is he not? Let's get into it, shall we? And of course, we're going to start it off on a high note. We're going to start it off on why he is. The man is instant offense. We've talked about what he did at the uh, combine. We've talked about the type of player that he is. And, And so, you know, you look at what he did last year at State, 16 points per game. Uh, on 40% from the field, 37% from deep. The man can stroke it. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about that. 
this is not just a, oh, he's an all right shooter. He's No, he's a very good borderline great shooter. There's not, there shouldn't be any discussion about um, his ability to shoot the three because he can do it. But it's not just about his ability to shoot the three. He can create shots from elsewhere. He, he can knock down the mid-range at a decent clip. I wouldn't say that he's the best uh, mid-range shooter I've ever seen, but he's he's pretty good at that as well. So the ability to create shots, vital. Like I said, instant offense, instant offense. The one thing um, that Seagal said that, you know, I think that everybody would would 100% agree about is the comfort, the comfortable and confident part. And let me go into why that's another reason that he's looking like a first rounder. The man has unshakable confidence. This is not a player that when he starts missing, all of a sudden he's going to tense up and stop shooting altogether. He's just going to keep letting it fly until they start to fall, which at State, for the most part, they did. He only had three games where he did not hit a shot, and some of those games were earlier in the season, and you could get why a freshman would be apprehensive enough to stop shooting if you go 0 for 6, 0 for 7. But if you're looking at the second half of the season, I don't think there was a single game uh, where he went 0 for a single digit. Actually, I don't think there was a single game in the second half of the season where he went 0 for at all. Um, I could be wrong there. Let me check and make sure. Yeah, no, and in the second half, there wasn't. There simply was not one. I mean, the worst game that we saw from him, he went 1 for 9 uh, against Notre Dame. But, again, he kept firing. He kept firing. There, there was no – pause in them. There was no hesitating. Them. There was no, um, you know, what are we, what are we going to see or what are we going to do here? He just kept firing. He kept going at it. So there's the unshakable confidence is definitely a thing because when you talk about what goes wrong with athletes, a lot of times when they get in the bright lights, when they get in front of the stars, when they get, we've seen so many players that are much more talented than to Smith that once the confidence left, there was just they were shelling themselves. It was almost nothing there. If we're referencing a Markel Fultz, if we're referencing a Ben Simmons, and no offense to those guys, I'm not saying that they're terrible players by any means. I'm saying they're so talented, they're still in the league, even with certain things going on and mess with their confidence. Jaquavion Smith doesn't have that type of ability to where if he were unconfident, unsure of himself, he'd still be here, but he's not. He doesn't have that problem. And the last thing, which is I, I think probably the biggest reason uh, why one would believe that he's a first rounder. The three ball is everything in today's NBA. Okay. All right. I know, I know that some of y'all, when you hear that, you're saying to yourself, what do you mean the three ball is everything? There's, you know, there's so much more to the game than just shooting threes and whatnot. Let me explain it to you like this. Okay. In this last season, in this last season, in the entire history, 75 year history, of the NBA, a majority, not a majority, but a good chunk of that, uh, there was not a three-point line for, okay? But with that being said, since the advent of the three-point line, of the 20 most threes uh, of the seasons, uh, 20 seasons, or 20 teams, rather, that attempted the most threes in a season, 12 of them were from the this past year, 12. You're looking at, and I'm going from uh, least to most here, the Trailblazers, Magic, Knicks, Celtics, Mavs, Thunder, Hornets, Bucks, Rockets, Warriors, Jazz, and Timberwolves. All just this year. They all were in the 20, they all were in the top 20 most prolific three-point shooting teams in terms of volume ever. So players who can shoot the three, are going to be valuable. They're going to be extremely valuable, and Tequavian can do that. I don't think that there's any argument from anybody about whether or not Tequavian can hit the three. And if there is an argument, I'd like to ask why. I'd like to ask on what grounds that argument exists. I would I would very much so love to lean into it and, and talk about why that argument exists because it shouldn't. It flatly should not. So with that being said, those are the reasons to me why Tequavian Smith, is he's a guy that, Again, we talked about the uh, off the charts athleticism, the three ball. We've talked about the instant offense. We talked about how important the three is to the league. Those are the reasons why he's potentially a first round pick. But with that being said, if I'm going to do this thing, I got to do it right. I got to build a fair argument. I got to talk about both sides of the coin here. And so 
when we come back, I'm going to talk about reasons why you would not want to do that. But in the meantime, I've got to tell you all about Bill Bar. I love brownies, but you know what I love more? Brownie batter. Sometimes I eat half the batter just while I'm making the brownies. Now, I get real embarrassed about it. Don't judge me. All right. We've all been there. But imagine if you could just clean the spatula and get some protein in. You're in luck because Built has a new creation, and this one is better than ever. The Brownie Batter Puff. You heard me right. The, this puff takes protein bars to a whole new level, and they're available right now on Built.com. And they're made with collagen protein, which your body absorbs more efficiently and provides tons of health benefits. So go to Built.com to get Brownie Batter Puffs now. Go to Built.com, use promo code LOCK15, and get 15% off your order. Use promo code L-O-C-K-E-D-1-5 for 15% off at Built.com. So we're making the case against now because we've made the case for, and, and you know, we've talked about um, all the good things that he does and that there is there is no, you know, I'm, again, I'm never going to, no fluff pieces, no hit pieces. I'll tell you what it is, what it ain't, what it could be, and what it can't. Now, with that being said, one of the reasons that I would not draft to Quavin Smith, and it's kind of tied into this, and we'll get into this in just a second, the uh, the headline that's below you if you're watching this on YouTube. But let me tell you this. I personally, in seeing Jaquavion Smith play last year and watching this game last year, I don't think that there is a complete enough game there to say, like, this makes sense. I'm, I'm, I'm confident in making this first-round pick. And I understand that in the NBA, it's different from the NFL and that like, if you're a first round pick in the NFL, you have to have all the things, all of them. Like things that you're missing are a very big deal and can get you knocked off the board. Like the things that a, a first round guy is quote unquote missing in the NFL, they really have just not to the extent of like, you're going to be one of the best in the league at in a few years. So with that being said, I don't, think that his game is quite there as far as like, okay, even if you are having a decent shooting night or an average shooting night, right, where you're shooting, um, you know, 36.8 or 36.9% from deep. Okay, good, great, for sure. What are you giving outside of that? Because if you give me the 37%, but on defense, you're a turnstile, which Respectfully, at point in times last year, he was. He was that that was the case. So if that is what is to be there, right? Then what I mean, wh- how? How do we say, okay, this makes sense. We justify this pick. Um, even though, you know, because this player is a good shooter, we're we're gonna make it work and make it happen, even if uh they can't get it done in terms of anything else on the court. And again, this is not to say he's a horrible, uh, just a god awful. There's no way he's he could be a good defender. He's at six four, not bad, not bad at all in terms of height. Uh, he doesn't have he, his arms are fairly long. He's he doesn't have like an extremely wide wingspan, but his arms are about what you would expect out of a six four guy. He's he's good for that. He's good for that. Now, when I talk about the thing that I disagree with that uh, Brett said in this. In, in his um, interview with, I want to say it was uh, all Wolfpack, there is there is a, a fact of the matter that these guys, he said, um, let me make sure I got this thing right here. He said that um, Terquavian is a uh, combo guard. He's a potential. Most of the teams that are, um, all right, so. I kind of think that's where he's trending in the draft, where you look at the order of the draft and the teams that are are picking 20 through 30, uh, where Tequavia Smith will likely be drafted. Most of the NBA teams that are there have been to the playoffs before teams. So if any of them are looking for an off-ball guard or combo guard that can come in and, like I said, pick up a role similar to Bones Highland, I think that's kind of what you're looking at him with. Now, I agree in terms of off-ball guard. Combo guard, mm -mm. 
that's not what you're expecting out of Jaquavion. That's not. And, and again, this is not a knock on his game. This is not saying that he can't develop this or that, um, you know, I'm not even going to say that he, I'm a thousand percent sure that he doesn't have it. What I am saying is I'm a thousand percent sure that he didn't display it last year. If you're looking at his uh, assist to turnover numbers last year, you're looking at 2.1, uh, 2.1 assists to 1.7 turnovers a game or two to basically it's a, a one-to-one wash in terms of uh, turnovers and, and assists for the young man. So, you know what I mean? Like the high of assists that he had last year was six against Pitt. And, you know, that was a game where that was the only game of the season to me where he was not shooting well, but he did other things well. That was the one time that I saw like, hey, he's struggling from the field, but you know what? He's impact impacting the game positively in so many other areas, in so many other areas. So um, the complete game part of it, that's that's definitely a part of it. And the next part, which now we're going to get to that uh, headline there. I heard this about Maxi Cleaver. I believe uh, Reggie Miller was saying it during the Warriors and Mavericks game four, okay? Maxi Cleaver was struggling uh, the past couple of games to hit threes, and he was a bit of a turnstile. And then he hit a couple early in the game, and he blocks a shot by Draymond, Draymond Green. And when he blocks the shot, Reggie Miller says, you see, when he's shooting well, he'll even start to defend. Here's the thing. You cannot count on, especially as a guy that is, again, not saying he's undersized, not saying that he's like, you know, I mean, physically, as far as like muscle mass and weight, yes, he's undersized, but he's only uh, 18 years old. That's what you expect. But with that being said, if we're talking about uh, the, the oh, my game has fallen apart because I'm not shooting well, Again, love the guy, loved watching him play. This is a thousand percent, not even like very seriously. This is a major, major problem for Tequavin. It was like if his shot wasn't falling uh, in a lot of these games, he kind of just like checked out. It kind of just was like, all right, well, that's that's it. That's all I got for you. If if, if my shot ain't falling, hey, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, I'll be back next game maybe. I'll be back tomorrow maybe, but – you know, I'm not shooting well, so um, see y'all some other time. That cannot happen in the NBA. It can't. It can't happen at a high level because that's the stuff that'll have you cut quickly, quickly. That's the stuff that'll have you sent down to the G League quickly, quickly. And if I'm looking at a game where I'm talking about that, it was his last game of the season uh, where he went scoreless against Clemson. He was 0 for 7. Uh, He had two points, but they were both uh, foul shots. And he had, uh, I want to say, no assists, two turnovers? Or, oh, I'm sorry. He had, uh, he fouled out in that game. Oh, no, he didn't. No, he didn't. I had that wrong. He did not foul out, but he had five turnovers against one assist. So, yeah, that. That is the type of stuff. Again, this Clemson stat line is a prime example of like, all right, if you're not shooting well, you you can't just have your game fall apart. That cannot happen. You cannot walk out of a game, oh, I was 0 for 7, uh, five turnovers, two assists. This is, you know, this is the best I got for, or one assist to five turnovers. This is the best I got for you. You can't have that. You can't have that. And granted, he's only, again, 18 years old, so you expect that to get better. You expect that to improve. But our NBA teams going to be willing to sit through that and, you know, wait and hope that improves? Or are they going to be willing to say, hey, you're going to go down to the G League and and we expect that to improve um, over the next couple of years? Who knows? Who knows? And that's, that's the thing there. And the last negative is – what was his last positive? The unshakable confidence. As the year started to linger on and it became clear that he was going to be one of the leading scorers on NC State team. Yes, he will keep shooting regardless of how he's shooting, which at times, hey, he figures it out. He doesn't start off hot, but he figures it out. At times, it has cost us ball games. And if you think I'm lying, look at the uh, pit game as a perfect example. Two of 12 from the field, two of eight from deep. And again, he did many things outside of his 
uh, shooting well that game. But that does not detract from the fact that his shooting was a net negative. If you look at the game before that, the Wake Forest game, we didn't really stand much of a chance. But him going 3 of 16, 2 for 10 from deep did not help. It absolutely positively did not help. So when you're talking about these things and when you're looking at um, how they happen, when you're looking at what could be a determining factor in whether or not um, I'm going to want this guy to be my my first draft pick or my uh, first round pick. I don't know. I don't know. I'll I'll say that. And then, and and we'll be back in just a few. And after that, I'm going to tell you all about uh, what I personally think, and I'm going to make a verdict on this thing, all right? So stick with me uh, while I got to pay some bills real quick, all right? And I'm paying those bills with Rock Auto. This episode is brought to you by Rock Auto. With the ever-increasing number of makes and models, it's now impossible for your local chain auto parts store to stock all the parts that you need. So why endure the often pointless and seemingly intimidating questioning about your vehicle and wait while the person behind the counter orders the parts on their computer choosing only the brand that their warehouse happens to carry? You have access to computers with access to rockauto.com at home and in your pocket. Save time and money when choosing Rock Auto. Rock Auto is a family business serving do-it-yourselfers for over 20 years. Their prices are reliably low for every customer. So go explore their uh, easy-to-use website today to find the solution your auto parts needs. Go to rockauto.com right now and see all the parts available for your car, truck. Right, locked on in the How Did You Hear About Us box so they know we sent you. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need. rockauto.com. So we're about to land this thing, but do I personally, you know, with everything that I'm hearing now and with everything that I know now, would I say that the Quavian Smith is a first round draft pick? Well, the answer is simple. It doesn't matter. Doesn't matter what I say. I know that some of y'all are look, sitting up here like, oh my God, the anticipation for that. But it's the reality. It doesn't matter what I think. Uh, about whether or not he's a a first round guy. I mean, at the end of the day, it is what it is. Either he's going to be a first rounder or he isn't. Um, but with that being said, you know, if he is a first rounder, hey, go make your money, man. Go, you know, go go be a millionaire. Uh, but if that doesn't happen, if he slides into second round or late second round or whatever the case may be, I don't know. I don't know. I, I you might want to come back. There might be more money again. I tell people this all the time. Like I said, when folks were talking about Chase Young potentially going back to school when he was the number one draft pick or number two draft pick behind Joe Burrow. And the next year was the year Trevor Lawrence was coming out. And I said, wait a minute now. Y'all are telling me with a straight face that this young man should go back to get his degree for what? And people were arguing with me on Twitter or trying to argue with me about this on Twitter and saying, well, he, you know, the degree just means that much to some people and da da da. And I said, that that doesn't make sense. You get a degree to get a job. You get a job to make money. If you have a job offer that is going to pay you more by simply signing on the dotted line than you would in 10 years at the job and he majored in criminal justice so people were saying well what if he wants to go on and be a lawyer and i said sure sure so let's do the math okay so he goes to school and then he goes uh to law school and he does that and you know i believe law school is three years so um at the end of that four years he's lost four years of his prime earning potential in the nfl and he's gonna have more student loan debt because i mean he didn't have to pay a dime for undergrad, but law school he would. So at that point, he's reduced his time in which he has to make money. He may not, probably not, as we know how D-line bodies work, probably won't get a second contract if he waits until 25, 26, or not a big second contract, not a mega second contract, uh, if he waits to 25, 26 to go to the league. So he should come back for what reason? And I use that same logic for Tequavion Smith right now. If he can come back and make more off NIL than what he would based on where he slotted or where he's picked, well, it means come back, dude. 
come back, go make the money at NC State, go do your thing. The NIL wasn't on the table back then. It wasn't. And even if NIL was on the table, you're not matching what Chase Young would stood to make there. To Quavian, if it's not an amount that you cannot match with NIL, listen, if, if it's an amount that can't be matched, go. But if it's an amount that can't be matched or beat, come on back. Come on back because guess what? You're only going to improve your draft stock. I think that his biggest problems – were caused by a couple of factors. Number one, the fact that he was 18. Number two, they didn't have a point guard. Uh, number three, I mean, it's when you're losing. The the type of season that was, when things are going bad, things are going terrible. And you start to press and you start to force. So I think that uh, those, those combinations of factors won't pile up on him again um, to where he has a bad season. And of course, there's always the risk of injury. That, that just is, it's, it's a reality. But Terquavion Smith's skill set is not that that, all right, if he loses a little bit of explosiveness, he's done. He's It's over. All the games are over. Um, so that's just my thoughts there, right? Thank you all so very much for coming out, Wolfpack Nation. I appreciate you every single time. Y'all make this show what it is. Peace and love, y'all. And as always, go Pack. Our Locked On Wolf Pack, your daily podcast on the NC State Wolf Pack, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. 